go. Hi guys, welcome to a Tuesday Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Sorry, my eyeballs watering. Every time I try to put makeup on, even if it's just plain eyeshadow, nothing else, still does it. My eyes are so sensitive. So today in Acts, we're going to be um, talking more about Paul and what's going on with him. He is on a ship on his way to Rome with some other prisoners. The guards are with them, of course, to guard the prisoners. There's like two over 200 people on the boat, 260 some, I believe it said. 260 some people on the ship, and they're on their way to Rome so uh, Paul can appeal to Caesar. So that's what we're reading about in Acts today, and then we have a psalm and Proverbs, of course. So today we will be reading Acts chapter 27, verses 21 through 44, Psalm 8, Proverbs 18, verses 23 and 24. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sell from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all those who sell with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. On the fourteenth night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was a hundred and twenty feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was ninety feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the, from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran to ground. The bow stuck fast and would not move, and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life, 
and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. All 276 of them. And that's where we're going to stop with Acts. And our psalm today is Psalm 8. For the director of music, according to Giddeth, a psalm of David. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Yes, it is, isn't it? And that was Psalm 8, a Psalm of David. And our Proverbs for today, we have two. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 23 and 24. So true. So true, both of them. Listen to these. Proverbs chapter 18, 23. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. Proverbs 18, 24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. All right, guys. That was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. We got our prayer list out here, um, an update. The memorial ceremony went well. Um, Sherm's still very upset, of course, and he had a really hard time when he got back from the memorial ceremony. They had a slideshow with a bunch of old pictures and stuff on it and everything, so of course that would be very emotional. You know, and he's supposed to get a disc of it as well, so I will be able to watch it as well whenever he gets the disc. But um, he said there was hardly anyone there, which was really sad. But um, everything went well. Everything went well. So I got some prayer requests for you guys. Thank you for your prayers for that, for the memorial ceremony. Please keep in prayer Garnet Boyer, Jim, I'm not sure of his last name, Norma Boyer, and Cara Newman. You okay in there? Yeah. Please keep in prayer Cindy and Jim Welsh. Jim's not doing too well right now. He's um, having some health problems. They're trying to figure out what's going on. So please keep him in prayer. He needs a lot of prayer right now. Please pray for Randy Post, Jody Mahorder, Ronnie Mahorder, and Nikki Mahorder. Please pray for Sherm, Sherm Crabtree. Please pray for Sandy and Rosie. Please pray for April and Linda Thacker. They both have a lot of health problems. And please pray for our post. I thought, where'd the rest of these go? I know I got more. Please pray for Dora Carper. And please pray for Michelle. Again, these are in no particular order. I just grab them, they get mixed up. So, 
They all need prayer just the same, no particular order. But um, Jim Welsh needs a lot of prayer right now for the health, health issue he's going through. Hopefully, we pray that they find out. We want to pray that they figure out what's going on and are able to take care of it. So, haven't had no luck yet. So, prayers for him. So, okay, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys again sometime this week with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.